Hello. Hi. Hello, everyone. I'm just getting a few things set up here. Oh, thank you. So today I just decided, um, I just um, did this little quick sketch and, hi Tati, I just did this little quick sketch and um, uh, I'm just going to paint and answer any questions you may have. Um, I don't really know where I was going with this. I was just, meh, just, it doesn't all fit on the, in the camera unless I turned it sideways and I don't really want to do that. So I'll just go side to side when needed. It's just going to be a moon, some mountains, and some trees, and I'm terrible at trees, so bear with me with that one. Tati, aren't you supposed to be in class? My daughter is here, Tatiana G. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do, we're just going to just go ahead and start. Um, first thing I'm going to do is just with the moon. Because we're going to start with that. I don't know why I'm starting with that, but hey. Um, this is really super informal. It's not really a tutorial or anything. It's just me painting. If you... Um, have any questions can you guys hear me if you have any questions or anything feel free to ask a few people have dm'd me some questions and i will be um and i'll be talking about some of the things they asked there's some things that people have asked me a few times my bl my brush is blue. My water's coming out blue. This is weird. I don't think I cleaned my brush enough. <laughs> um, give me one second. I need. I forgot to get some napkins. All right. So let's see. How long have I been doing watercolors? Oh, that was actually one of the questions that um, someone asked me. So, perfect. I'll just go ahead and answer that. Um, I have been watercoloring uh, actually just fairly recently. I just actually started in September, September, October timeframe. And I just kind of picked it up. I started off by doing some YouTube tutorials and that, yeah, that's the first thing I did was some YouTube tutorials. And then um, I just kind of took it from there. And actually, I'll tell you exactly how I started. And my daughter, Tatiana, is here and she'll, she will tell you about that. She is in college. She is at NYU studying civil engineering. Way to go. <laughs> and she texted me one day and told me that she was starting a bullet journal and I was like oh what's a bullet journal like I wanna I wanna do that too I'm always I've always been about the arts and crafts and she told me she was starting a bullet journal and then she showed me some examples of the pages that she had and I was like oh that's that's really cool like I, th I think I want to do that too so I started with a bullet journal and then I started following a bunch of people who have bullet journals on High Artistic Wave on Instagram. And um, when I started following them, I was like, oh man, they have, I don't know if you guys have ever seen anyone that have, uh, or follow anyone who have bullet journal pages. Wow, they're, the work is like super amazing. And um, I, there were some who had some watercolors in their bullet journals. And I was like, oh, I, I, you know, I really like that. I think I want to do that too. So I started watercoloring in my bullet journal and I had some really cheap Crayola watercolors. And I was like, oh, you know, this is really cool. I really like this. I think I 
want to try maybe to get a couple of nicer watercolor sets and some paper and then that's just kind of how I started I started taking some YouTube tutorials and I just I really did become addicted to YouTube and um uh yeah that's just kind of how I started so I'm still fairly fairly new at doing watercolors and yeah that's it um I, I I feel like I picked it up fairly quickly and um I don't know I just I it, I enjoyed it I I have a very high stress job I'm a social worker and I work with families in crisis and it really does help me to relax when I come home I don't do it very often um I do it to relax at night. I have a two-year-old and um, I, you know, she's she's really into it. So I can't, hi Kim, how are you? I can't really do it too much around her because she wants to be on top of it and touch everything. And um, so I usually do it when she's in bed, which is at night or if I'm not at work during the afternoons when she takes a nap and she's actually taking a nap right now or she's supposed to be taking a nap, but she's not really taking a nap. That sounds very familiar to my story. Yeah, yeah, I I, I feel like a, a, that a lot of people kind of have that, that same story. Um, but yeah, I really, I really enjoy it. It helps me to relax and to kind of delve into the artistic side of things. I have, um, I come from, you know, a arts and crafty, type of family and we all we all love to do that so you can thank my daughter Tatiana who I don't know if she's still here but she's the one who kind of introduced me to not not watercoloring but she kind of opened my eyes to something new so I'm just here just doing a little moon um someone asked what type of brushes I use I mainly use Princeton brushes. I love, love, love Princeton brushes. And I use um, a, 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 a range of them. I have this um, Princeton Artiste Select. This is a size 10 one. And I bought a pack of them, about six or seven of them for about $10. And then I, I just started trying a bunch of different brushes of theirs. This is a Princeton Elite. I also have a Princeton Snap, and I only bought this one because it's really cute. <laughs> so yeah, I, I use mostly Princeton. Here's a big Princeton Velvet Touch, which is my flat brush. I also have, um, bye Kim, it was nice seeing you. I know, I can't wait. You guys, I'll be doing um, a collaboration with um, Kim over at the Lettering Nook um, in next week, next Saturday. I also use silver black velvets and um, I don't use these as often as the Princeton, but I, I do use these as well. I have a couple of those sizes. <laughs> I am super excited. I'm a little nervous about that too. <laughs> so I've been practicing water a lot. Um, over at the Lettering Nook on Saturday, I'm going to be um, showing you techniques on how I do my water. And uh, yeah, I haven't done that yet. I've done skies, I've done moons, I've done a bunch of things, um, but I'm going to be showing you how to do water. So make sure that you give the lettering nook a follow. All right. I just made a mistake here, so I'm cleaning it up. All right. Anyone else have any other questions? Otherwise, you're just going to hear me talk about nothing. <laughs> All right, so I'm just doing a little landscape. I just kind of sketched it. I usually don't um, sketch. One of the questions that someone DM'd me was, how do I plan my paintings? Most, most, most times, especially when I paint in the evenings, I, um, I come home from, from work around 5, 6 o'clock, you know, eat dinner, play with the baby, put her to bed. Um, so I don't usually have a lot of time to plan my paintings at night. Um, but if I happen to be home, like today, I had half a day of work. Um, 
if I happen to be home, I do plan my paintings and I sketch something out. Um, nine times out of ten, though, in the in the in the middle of the, or in the evenings, I just kind of go with the flow. I sit in front of the TV and I marathon a show on Netflix or anything. Right now, I'm watching Bones, um, for like the tenth time, and I just paint. I don't really have a plan. What kind of paints do you use? Um, I have, um, I I have a, a quite a variety of paints, um, but my absolute favorites are, M Graham and um Sennelier. those are just my absolute favorites and they are super 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 affordable um i've i have a bunch of them i have a lot of mission gold because i bought two of their sets i have um daniel smith um but i prefer m graham and Sennelier. if you don't know they're made with honey and they re-wet really, really easily. And their colors are bold and, and vibrant. And I just, I love them. Now, don't get me wrong. I love the other ones. But not as much as I love M. Graham. M. Graham is like my first love. All right. Do I use tubes or cake? I started off with cake with pans. And I graduated to tubes and the reason why I really love the tubes a lot is because they're more economical for me so if you if you paint a lot I feel like the um tubes are a great deal now you you will pay quite a bit more but they last a really long time so with my tubes I can refill my um, palette about three or four times before um, I run out of them. So yeah, I do. I do prefer the tubes. Um, and then there are times where I don't use, I, I have a lot of tubes cause I'm like addicted to, <laughs> to watercolors and I don't, um, I don't use all of them, but if I need it, I'll just use a little, little tiny, tiny bit of one and then put it away. But I did start with pans. I started with the Windsor and Newton Cotman set and that was very affordable. It was, I think a 12, 12 pans for like 15 20 dollars and I really I loved that one um what type of oh my it's bleeding into my moon what type of watercolor paper do you use this one that I'm using now is arches and I'm sure that you guys have all heard of that it's super expensive so what I do is if you have a Hobby Lobby near you you can use your 40% off coupon. They have one if you get the Hobby Lobby app. They have coupons that you can use. They'll give you a coupon every week for 40% off. And whenever I'm at Hobby Lobby, I will buy a pad of Arches paper. And instead of paying like, you know, 20 or $30, or not 30, but instead of paying like $20 for it, um, I end up paying like, you know, 11 or $12 for it, which is actually, a, it's a really good deal. But I never, ever buy it um, full price because that's expensive. However, you can also go to Blick.com um, or Amazon, although it's a little bit more expensive on Amazon. But you can go to Blick and it's cheaper at Blick as well. Not as cheap as if you use a coupon at Hobby Lobby. but every And every once in a while, you can find um, uh, a good, really good sale at Blick or on Amazon or somewhere. Um, so when I'm not using my arches you're welcome i'm super happy to answer any questions but when i'm not using my arches paper i use a another brand called fluid it's uh, fluid 100 which is 100 percent watercolor paper and you can find this in my highlights i have pictures of them if you want to see what it looks like and fluid i also buy it on blick on amazon as well and at my local art store and it's it's not super cheap, but it's it is cheaper than Arches. And the watercolor journal that I use, it's by Global Arts and they use the um they use the fluid paper as well in that journal, which is why I love it. And yeah, I use I've used a variety of papers, but I feel like if you are really, if you really want to get serious about watercolor, there are many different brands to choose from and a lot of um, expensive papers and a lot of cheap papers. And if you're going to spend, 
your money on anything at all, I would say spend it on the paper. Um, don't skimp on the paper because the paper can make or break your painting. You can have a beautiful painting and, and um, you know, you're, you're trying to execute that painting. And sometimes if the paper is not good enough, it could fall apart or, you know, just a, a, a uh, a variety of things. You can skimp on your brushes. I, I am a huge believer that you don't need to spend a lot of money on your brushes at all, um, but you definitely should invest in your paper. So, oh, my moon is just a mess right now. That's okay. <laughs> Thanks, Tati. That's my daughter, for those of you who uh, who don't know, who is giving me lots of props. That's why I keep her around. <laughs> and my other child is <laughs> is in, uh, oh, she's, she's just getting out of school now. Tati over there is, is in New York City at the moment. She is at NYU studying civil engineering. She's so smart. Um, let's see. <laughs> you keep me around because I'm great. Meh, I mean, I guess. <laughs> uh, <laughs> is expensive paint better? I, I don't, uh, that's kind of like a hard question to, <laughs> to ask. I feel like paint is a very individual choice. When I first started, Everyone was, everywhere I looked and anyone I asked said that I should um, get Daniel Smith paint or I should get like um, Windsor Newton paint or Schmincke paint. And I've tried all of those and I don't agree. I feel like paint is a very individual choice. So you don't have to get expensive paint in order to get um, a good painting. Um, you pick what you like. My one thing I would tell you is to get um, artist grade paints or professional paints. And again, those don't have to be expensive at all. Um, if you give me a second, I will go, let me go grab some and, and show you what I mean. I will be right back. Okay, so when we're talking about paint, oh, <laughs> sorry about that. So I'm going to show you uh, a couple of different varieties of paint that I have. So I have, let me just put this aside for a second. I have M. Graham, which is my favorite. I have, I have like one or two Schmincke. That's that one. Here's a Daniel Smith and here's a Sennelier. So you see the difference in size and I can tell you that the most expensive out of these four was this one, which is the Schmincke paint. And it's this tiny, tiny little tube of paint and it's five milliliters. And the second most expensive was this one, which is a Daniel Smith. And again, it's a tiny little tube. This one costs about um, $13, $14. This one costs about $10. Um, and this is how much paint you get. And then you go up to... Daniel, or oh, sorry, M. Graham, which is my favorite. And this is a 15 milliliter tube. And this one cost me about $8. And then we have Sennelier, which is this giant bad boy here. And this is a 21 milliliter tube. And this one cost me about seven, $8. So you get a lot more paint with these brands. And the, uh, the M. Graham all come in this size. So you get a lot more paint in these brands than you do in these brands. However, a lot of people prefer these over these. I can tell you that the M. Graham, for those of you who don't live in the United States, this is made in Portland, Oregon, in or Portland, Oregon, and um, it's a lot cheaper in the States. And I heard that not a lot of people even know about this brand um, outside of the States. So 
I prefer these two. You get more bang from your for your buck, and they're super pigmented and um, just they're beautiful to work with. And then you have these two. Um, I don't have as much of these, but I don't feel the need because I can get those colors here. So I do love pan paint. Um, don't get me wrong. I do love them. I have I have some. I have a, um, a Countman set, which is student grade, um, student grade uh, Windsor & Newton. And I really do like them. Um, they're really hard to re-wet though, for some reason. Um, and I don't, I don't know if that's just because of the paint, because of the brand, but that's the only, um, the only pan set that I have. After I did the, um, Windsor New Incontinent, I graduated to professional watercolor paints and I started using the M Gram. And I may prefer the M Gram because it was my first brand of two paint, but also I just, they're a lot cheaper and you get a lot more. Um, I can't find the M brand at my local art store so i only get those on amazon or on blick and mgram has um sets of paint that you can get for a lot cheaper they have like a landscape set that comes with four or five colors they have a cityscape set they have a lot of different sets that you can get if you just want to try it out um where um mila i'm sorry i don't speak russian so i don't understand what you're saying um where do I get my supplies from? I get them from a lot of places. I get them from my local art store, which is Hyatt's. I also get them from Amazon and I get them from Blick. Those are like my top three places that I get my paints from. Um, I don't, sometimes when I'm looking for paints um, and I, I, I really don't like to go, go out to shop, but I will compare prices and then just buy the cheapest one. Um, you know, I've never heard of, is it Grum, Grumbacher, Grumbacher? I, I don't know how to pronounce it. I, I hadn't heard of them until, um, about a month ago. And, um, I, I was going to try it, but then I was like, no, you know, I don't, I really don't need any paints. How are those? Do you, do you enjoy those? Are those professional? I don't, I don't know. I don't know much about them. Thank you, Rainy Arts. This one, I'm just kind of, you know, this is not a great piece, but I'm just, just, you know, doing a little something here while I answer your questions. So this may not turn out the best because I'm not really paying attention to what I'm doing, but um, this is the brush that I'm using now. Actually, I got on Blick and this, this promotion is still going on. This is a... Raphael quill brush. Oh, and I really love it. This is my first time using a quill brush and I got it um, through a promotion on Blick. And again, the promotion is still going on. And it's if you if you buy, I think, like three or four Sennelier paints, you get a free um, size zero Raphael set or a Raphael brush. And I really like it. I didn't think that I would, but I, I really like it. It's really, really soft. It's a very soft brush. Oh, my wife just joined. Hi, babe. Um, so, oh, so you do like the, the, so they're, if they're beginner, it's just a beginner paint. So not sure if it's good or not. Okay. Um, <laughs> stop it. Moozle too. Stop it. Um, yeah, I don't know much about them, so I can't even really like tell you. I, I don't use a lot of different variety of paints. I kind of just stick to what I know. And I, I do, I do, there are definitely some Daniel Smith paints that I really like. There are some really, like, like the one that I use for the, for the moon, this is Moon Glow by Daniel Smith. And I, it's one of my favorite of their paints. And again, I have just a little too because it's expensive, but, um, I really, really enjoy the Daniel Smith Moon Glow. So I do have a couple of them, um, but I don't know too much about other paints. Like I said, I just, I kind of stick to, to what I know. And I, I, I really like the, the M Graham paints. It looks like the back of the baby's head while she's slouched over. <laughs> Stop it. My painting is just starting. <laughs> so right here, I'm just going, um, my sky is really uneven. 
I let it dry. So I'm just going to go over it again and try to get an, an e a more even wash on it. And we'll see how it turns out. Like I said, it's, I don't know how it's going to turn out, but hey. All right. Um, all right. It was nice talking to you. Any other, any other questions out there? My baby is supposed to be sleeping and she is currently in her bed having a grand time laughing and screaming <laughs> and not taking a nap. <laughs> Bye, babe. I love you. Bye-bye. All right. So I'm just adding a bit more blue to the sky. And we're going to see how this looks. How do you get a clean wash without strokes? Um, that really depends on your paper. Um, some paper, uh, the strokes come through and they dry that way. And other papers, that doesn't happen. So it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen a lot with, um, with, this paper, which is the Arches paper. I'm, I'm using Arches right now. So it doesn't happen a lot with this paper because it holds a lot of water and it stays wet for a long time. So if your paper dries in between um, your paint applications, then it will get a little streaky and you'll get a lot of um, brush strokes in your paper. If your paper is wet and it stays wet, uh, the colors just blend in together and um, the strokes just disappear. So. It, it, it does depend on your paper. It also may depend on the softness of your brush, on the, sorry, the softness of your brush. So um, if you have a soft brush, this um, quill, quill brush that I'm using, oh geez, this quill brush that I'm using, um, it is made, I think, with squirrel hair. Um, I don't know, it's very soft though. So it just glides, glides over the paper. And look what happened to my mountain. I didn't let it dry. <laughs> and that is, again, that is okay. Let's pick up some of this paint. And so like I said, the Arches paper is really good. Um, because it stays wet for a really long time. So you see, I just picked that up. I'll just have a white patch on the mountain, but that's okay. It'll give us a little bit of dimension on that mountain. So there we go with that. Any other questions out there? I am. Um, I just... uh started this live just to kind of answer your questions. I get a lot of DMs and um, and a, a lot of it is uh, they're like repeat questions, which I absolutely 100% don't mind, don't mind answering. But I figure if, if a few of you have um, the same questions that others might have the same questions as well. And I am by no means an expert because as I said, I am still really new at watercoloring, but I picked up a lot of different techniques along the way um, by studying other artists and by studying, um, by looking at YouTube and taking classes on Skillshare. All right, let's see. Oh, I make a lot of mistakes. I make a lot, a lot of mistakes. That's my pen. Um, and, and again, as I said, it, it all comes from experience. And I, I feel like even the most experienced artists and watercolorists make a lot of mistakes. Um, and the the thing with with making mistakes is you kind of have to embrace your mistakes and learn from them. Um, don't get down on yourself. You see here the moon is the the sky is bleeding into the moon again, and you know that's okay. You just kind of do your best to fix it. And I I feel like a painting looks just a lot better and a lot you know more real if it's not perfect. There's always gonna be some flaws to it. 
Uh, where do you get the tape that you see from the paper, the blue one? Uh, the blue tape, I just got it. Um, actually, my father-in-law bought it for me, and it's just painter's tape. You can get it at, like, um, uh, Home Depot or your local hardware store. Um, that's usually where I get it. I also use masking tape. I ran out of masking tape. That's why I started using the painter's tape. Um, but, oh, yeah, you can you can just pick this up anywhere. Where do I get my ideas from? I have a Pinterest account and you will find a lot <laughs> of um, things on Pinterest. When I first started watercoloring, I had no idea what to do. So I did, you know, YouTube and I followed along with their tutorials and I just kind of painted what they painted um, and I followed along with them. And I, um, but I, I, and that's kind of how you find what you like to paint. Um, I found that I like to paint a lot more landscapes than I do realistic type things, probably because I don't know how to draw. And I, it's something that I wanted to work on this year was just learning how to draw and learning how to sketch. So I've been practicing that a lot more. Um, but I get my ideas just from all around me, from nature, from movies that I watch, from, you know, I was the other, a couple of weeks ago, I was doing you know, my biannual Harry Potter marathon. And I did a bunch of um, pieces on Harry Potter because that was what was inspiring me at the moment. I was really enjoying um, watching it and reading the books. I usually read the books and then watch the movies, which I did again. And I just, you know, I love Harry Potter. So I was like, I want to paint some Harry Potter stuff. And that's what I did. Um, I go outside and I, you know, look at everything around me. And one of the things that I didn't notice uh, once I started watercoloring and, and dealing with like different colors and shades is that I started to view things in a different way. So I would go outside and, you know, look up at the sky and like, oh, those clouds are so pretty or look at where the dark hits the light and look at how, you know, the sun is shining through here or look at the different colors of these leaves. I, um, I just started seeing just a lot, a lot more out there and, and that has inspired me as well. Um, to try to capture things in nature that I never really noticed before. Um, does my paper wave or bend? Oh, hold on. There was one before you. What's your favorite art store? I have um, a local art store called Hyatt's, and um, that's my favorite. I love them. Um, I go there with my, with my daughter, Ariana, because she is also an artist. I don't know if some of you follow her. Her name is Makumatz. And her and I go there a lot together. I also love Blick online. Um, I'll go there a lot. Um, does my paper wave or bend? It does. It does sometime. Um, if I don't tape it down, it will. And it really depends on how wet you make your paper. If you use a lot of water, um, the paper will bend and it will buckle. Um, but if you decide that you don't want to use a lot of water, then the chances are that it might not, it might not. But I tape it down because I like to have a nice border and I also, um, it also prevents the paper from, from buckling. You can also stretch your paper. I've never done it. I've seen a lot of different like YouTube tutorials on how to stretch your paper. Um, but I, I actually have never done it myself, but you can and, and, uh, stretching your paper prevents it from, from buckling and waving. Uh, Bye, Carol. Thanks for joining us. What's my favorite teacher on Skillshare? Oh, there's there's so many. <laughs> there's so many. I've taken so many um different Skillshare classes. I like, I don't know if if I'm pronouncing her name correctly, but Y Tang, I think that's how you pronounce her name. Like I love I love her classes. Um God, I can't recall off the top of my head right now, but there are there are definitely a lot of um uh different folks that I like. I like Peggy Dean from um Pigeon, the Pigeon Letters. I like her as well. She has a lot of nice classes on urban sketching and on things that you can do with your art, such as digitizing your work, and I really like that as well. Um and I also have um not have. I also follow a lot of YouTube artists. I like Denise Sodden from In Liquid Color. I'm actually one of her Patreons because I, I like her so much. Um, I decided to support her. Um, and 
Yeah, I, I have a YouTube channel as well. I, I just started the YouTube channel. It's Vanessa Paints, just like this. Um, and you can find the link on my profile. Um, but I have uh, three or four tutorials up. Hey, Kiana. Uh, Kiki Custom Art is here. So I have um, a three or four tutorials up. I, I have to get a little bit better about, you know, putting stuff on there. But I don't I don't really have that many videos up there but I will um I just have to make sure that I find time some afternoons to um record and, and put some content on there but yeah I, I have a couple of tutorials on there all right so you can see here that it bled through the blue bed bled into my mountains and into my moon but eh, that's okay <laughs> I don't even mind I don't mind at all and my painting is still fairly wet so hi baby there's Ariana that's my other daughter Makumats <laughs> why are you home <laughs> I left I left work early um I took a half day today that's why I'm home um so there's there's my other daughter so Makumats who is um typing there in the chat um, she is a an artist herself, and her art is amazing. So she gives me a lot of tips and tricks, um, especially when it comes to um, showing like uh, art, um, showing shadows and lights in my work. And um, so she, yeah, she gives me a lot of tips, and you guys should definitely follow her. She is she's very helpful to me. And yeah, I think I need to dry this piece so that I can move on with it. So give me two seconds. So Arches paper is um, a really good paper and it retains water really well. And it takes a really long time for it to dry. So if you're not patient like me, then you would have to dry it yourself. And I just use a regular hair dryer. I know a lot of people use some of those. Um, I don't even know what they're called, but they're like these dryers made for embossing. Those look really cool, but a, reg a regular hair dryer will work as well. Uh, you don't have to get any anything fancy. Um, as long as it dries your work, that's fine. So I'm super impatient, so I'm going to dry it now. You might want to cover your ears for this. <laughs> Hola, Penny. ¿Cómo estás? All right, so now I'm going to add just um, a little bit more color to the mountains. And you can see here the blue ran into it. So I'm just going to um, add a little bit more color to try to c cover that up just a little bit. <laughs> and like I said before, it's okay if, if um, you make a couple of mistakes. Don't be so hard on yourself. Thank you, baby. I just with this one, I was um, I was like wondering what to what to paint today, and a couple of people DM'd me and asked me to do a couple of things, but I didn't really have time to plan out like the sunflower painting. A few people DM'd me and asked if I could do the the sunflower painting, but I didn't really have time to sketch that out, and that one needs to be sketched out beforehand. So I just wanted something super quick that I could paint pretty loosely and not have to worry about making mistakes. Um, with a sunflower painting, you have to be uh, really precise and um, you have to devote a lot of time to like each leaf or not leaf, each petal, I should say. 
Um, and I just, I right now, I just didn't, I didn't want to invest the time into that right now. <laughs> so I'm just doing like a little mountain, no shading or anything. I don't, I don't want to do any shading. All right. Does anyone have any other questions that I haven't answered or, okay. What do I do with my finished pieces? I never know what to do once they're done, especially the ones that I'm happy with. Neither do I, honestly. I um, I have a, a, not like a portfolio, but like a little plastic um, baggy type thing. Like one of those plastic things that you put documents in. I have one of those and I put my paintings there. I also have an Etsy shop and I figure, you know, I, I really do love a lot of my paintings, but... I'm not going to do anything with them once they're done. I'm just going to have them in there and like no one's going to really see them. So I put them up for sale on my Etsy shop. Um, I get um, a lot of like um, friends and family who commission me and I will give them those paintings or, or make it for them. Um, I also make them as gifts. And so, yeah, I, I have a couple on my wall. I put two of them on my wall at, at work. And I have uh, a few here that I am going to frame. I just haven't gotten around to it. But um, <laughs> what do you do with your non-failures, um, Kiana? I don't, I don't see you having that many failures. <laughs> but I, I have a folder. It's basically what it is that I just throw them in as well. <laughs> a folder of failure. <laughs> I have, I have, um, right now I'm on my kitchen table, but I have, we have a little sunroof and my wife and I share the space in there. Um, and I also put a bunch of them on my wall as well. A bunch of the little pieces, not, not the, not the bigger pieces, but I, yeah, I put a lot of the bigger pieces on my wall. That's fun. And I, I, I switch them around. I don't have that much wall space, but I switch them around. Um, so, so I'm not looking at the same pieces over and over. <laughs> But most of the stuff that's in my Etsy shop, I um I just have them in a folder cuz I don't want I don't want the baby she my baby likes to um take my my paintings off the wall or off wherever they are and bring them to me and tell me what they are. <laughs> so if I have like a moon she to like take the painting off the wall and bring it to me and say it's a moon and I'm like go put it back. <laughs> Peanut, yeah. Uh she does. She likes to do that. <laughs> so, so yeah, so I, I, I try to keep everything out of her reach, but you know, that doesn't always work. <laughs> I think she thinks that I paint just for like, <laughs> for her entertainment. <laughs> All right. Ugh, I keep forgetting to let this dry thoroughly. So everything is bleeding in. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> and it doesn't even matter. So um, that's my pen also has little ones that like to help her. And it doesn't even matter if I like, because I got her a little set of um, like baby watercolors. It doesn't even matter if I put that out for her. She's like, no, I don't want that. I want to paint with your stuff. <laughs> hey, Lindsay, how are you? So speaking of watercolor, um, Lindsay, who just joined us from Artistical Isle, or Artistical Isle, Artistic Isle Watercolor, she has, um, the most amazing, um, handmade paints. So if you are looking for an affordable, um, variety of handmade paints, then you should definitely check her out. 
<laughs> and I'm going to be doing a live for those of you that just joined me. I'm going to be doing a live over at the Lettering Nook next Saturday. I think it's next Saturday. Yeah, next Saturday at 2 Eastern. And yeah, her paints are good. Um, Lindsay Makumata is my daughter. Um, so I'm going to be doing a live over at the Lettering Nook. And I'm going to be using her paints to demonstrate how to um, how I paint water. So if you want to see how I paint water, plus if you want to see how her paints um, hold up, then you should check it out. You should also look at my feed because I've painted a lot of different pieces with her um, handmade paints. And I, I am like addicted to them. It's it's awful for me, but great for her. <laughs> I should say it's awful for my checkbook, but it's great for her. Thank you, Lindsay. Does anyone else have any um, other questions that I could answer? Thank you. Is it Akira? Akira Jinx. Thank you, thank you. Um, I'm just kind of doing this like on, on the fly. <laughs> so it's not gonna be a perfect piece, but hey, it's something. And right now I'm just adding another layer to the mountain. Um, that's closest to me or in the forefront so that um, it shows like a little depth. I'm going to try to go over these pieces that bled. There we go. There we go. And that's okay there. All right, so I am going to attempt, so you're going to watch me um, in my little failure here. I'm going to attempt to do some trees, which doesn't always work out really well, but yikes. We'll see. Thank you. Thank you. I tried to create the effect, but I was talking so, so much that I let my paint dry <laughs> or my paper dry. Bye. Thank you for joining. Um, yeah, so I, I was I was definitely going for the halo effect and then I let my paint dry, my paper dry, and then it didn't come out as well as I wanted, but yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, so let's attempt some trees. Let me see if I can get a smaller brush for this. <laughs> Thank you. All right, you you guys cannot judge me on my trees. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. You, if you look at my um at my feed, I don't have a lot of trees. I don't have a lot of grass. I don't have a lot of that because I, I am not good at it. So um, there are people who are way better than me, and so we're just gonna attempt. Oh, I've seen that too, Lindsay. And um, I don't have one. I have so many brushes, but that's like one of the only brushes that I don't have. So I think the next time I go to my um, art supply store, I'll pick one up. A fan brush. The problem with me, I think, is that I have such shaky hands. So I can't really use small brushes because my strokes are not even. They are really wavy. I mean, you can tell right there. So my... It's just, it's, it's never a good look. <laughs> but the, the more I try to control something, the shakier my hands get. So yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't really work. And I'm so used to working with, with super big brushes that I try to work the same techniques with the small brushes and that just, it doesn't, it doesn't work. So 
So I have to, I guess I have to practice that. That's, that's on my to-do list of practicing stuff. Kind of just make the tree three <laughs> Bob Ross styles. <laughs> All right, I'm I'm definitely gonna gonna have to try that. I'm I'm definitely gonna have to see what this fan brush is all about. <laughs> I've never tried any any type of painting except um watercolor painting. I mean, you know, in in high school they have you do other other mediums and stuff, but I don't. I have never done anything like that I would show anyone anyone. <laughs> Kiki, the only um thing that I've gotten out of Bob Ross is um, you know, the happy <laughs> happy little happy little accidents. <laughs> I can totally relate to that. Oh gosh, my trees are skinny. Oil as a teen, acrylics in college, and watercolor as an adult. So which one do you like the most? <laughs> my happy little accidents. Uh, oh geez. All right. I mean, these sort of look like trees, right? <laughs> Watercolor, hands down. Yeah, I really do enjoy it. I like that you don't have to have a precise hand, because obviously I, I, I obviously don't have a precise hand, um, and that you can make you can make mistakes. And I know a lot of people say it's really hard to fix a mistake in watercolor, but um, I guess it's because I don't really have experience with a lot of other mediums, but I find that um, it's very forgiving for me anyway. And like I said before, if I don't like something, I just throw a mountain on top of it and it makes everything better. <laughs> Hi, Lake Princess and King of Dwarfs. By the way, I love that name. <laughs> I, I love it. Yeah, water, I, I agree. For me, watercolor is absolutely the most forgiving. All right. You know, I don't know about you, but I feel like this is looking okay. Let me add some over here. <laughs> All right. Well, it has to be, Lindsay, doesn't it? Because uh, <laughs> you're making watercolors now. So yeah, so so for those of you that that don't follow Artistic Isle watercolor, you should. She makes awesome paints. Although you can't blame me if you start buying all of her paints. It's not my fault. <laughs> Does anyone else have any other questions? I know we've talked about paint and paintbrushes and um, paper. If you have any questions, we talked about my my little art journey, and you've watched me kind of massacre this painting, but that's okay. Oh, geez, oops. So one thing I, I feel like I really do need to practice and improve on is my trees, are my trees, I should say. Because um, I'm not really happy with them. Oh. <laughs> ah, 
You know, I'm surprised that I still have my my New York City accent. Um, when I go home, because all of my family is from New York City. Right now, I'm in I'm in Buffalo. But when I go home to to New York, everybody's like, "Oh my God, you don't even sound the same. You sound a little bit like like country." And I'm like, "What? No, I don't." Um, but I I get around like my brothers and my mom, and everybody is like, you know. <laughs> they have like really super thick New York accents and I don't anymore. And not as much as I used to because I've been in Buffalo s- since I was 17 years old. I came here to go to college and I just never left. So I've been here since I was 17 and I've kind of adopted a lot of the accents from here. Um, and so I've lost a lot of it, but you know, every once in a while... I, I, I hear it and my my wife is always telling me to say like four. Um but she's like, Oh, you say it's so funny. <laughs> so like the number four and like other <laughs> other little things, coffee. I I do still say my coffee. Um I try to say it I guess the way she says it and it just doesn't happen. <laughs> so I'll have four co- coffees. <laughs> But yeah, not a lot of people notice it anymore. And I'm also, it's funny because I'm also, I'm Dominican and my first language um, is Spanish. So um, you, there's like a different sort of um, New York accent that goes along with like, you know, the Spanish New York accent as opposed to just like the regular like New York accent. <laughs> All right. So there, oh, let me fix this mountain. I am not happy with this mountain. (laughs) I say, let me fix it and I'll probably end up messing it up. And didn't I just say in my last life, just leave, leave everything alone. (laughs) I'm not taking my own advice. Thank you, Storm. Thank you. Bye, Lindsay. Thanks for joining us. I saw that you shipped my paint, so I'm really looking forward to that. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> All right. So, I, oh, you know what? We need to add. We need to add the stars. I don't think that I am going to add. I'm. Not, I don't think I'm going to spray it with. Um, Hi, mate. I don't think I'm gonna I'm gonna do my white ink that I usually do, which is this. I usually take this, and I in my last video I showed you a couple of different methods for um, putting this down on your paper. I don't think I don't really feel like doing this today, so I think I'm just gonna do a few dots with um, my white Uniball Signo. Can you? I think you can see it. There you go. Whoops! Sorry about that. What is going on here? Let's see. Can you guys still see me? Because my screen just went black. All right, my screen just went black and I have no idea why. Okay, well, as long as you can still see me, (laughs) I can't see anything on my screen. So hopefully the page is still within view. So I'm just gonna lay down some dots. Oh, my thing is clogged. Okay, here we go. So I'm just gonna lay down some dots if this decides to work. There we go. Um, Instead of using the white splatter because that's going to require me to cover up my paper and do a bunch of other things that I am not really feeling (laughs) feeling it right now so I don't know why my screen went black that's weird I got a I got a phone call in the middle of taping here and then my screen went black (laughs) 
Sorry about that. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> so thanks. Thanks, you guys, for coming back. I'm actually just wrapping this up. Adding the last few stars in the sky and then then we can take the tape off all right so there we go and we will go ahead and take this tape off and as I said um, before if you want to try to avoid ripping your paper as much as possible pull away from your painting so pull it down. That way, if it rips, it doesn't rip into your painting. So that's what we'll do here. All right. Yeah, we're just about done here. And here is the final piece. Let's see, put it, there we go. All right, that is that. Thank you all for joining and thanks for coming back. Um, and I will see you, I think I'm doing another live tomorrow um, and I may do the sunflower piece tomorrow. So um, thank you all for joining me and I will see you all again next time. Bye.